they're taking information, the numbers, the reduced numbers. It, it's based on, from my understanding, from 2018. Uh, they took a snapshot in time, took the numbers from then. So just highlight this. 2018 was one of the worst years uh, in Labrador West in the last 10 years. I'd like to challenge them now to be open and, and take a snapshot now. See how everything's going with all minds going on full blast. Actually, not right now during the COVID. Uh, but more recently, before COVID, and take that snapshot and actually have a look. And also include the charter flights. If we're going to make a decision, make it based on facts. Be transparent about it. Show us the facts. Prove to us that, th that there is some justice behind your numbers and your decisions. Our union represents workers at most federally regulated airports across the country. There's a reason why we call those workers aircraft rescue firefighters and not just firefighters. That's because the people at Wabash Airport will not just put out a fire on a plane or at a building or structure at the airport. They will rescue people from a plane that has a fire or emergency when it lands at the airport. It is truly a life or death scenario. That is why what is happening here, right here in Wabash, is so ill thought, thought out and dangerous. In the fact that fire safety and rescue services should be a priority and should be the best possible service it can be regardless of numbers. So I think it's it's very clear that it's regulatory. It's going to be difficult to get around to regulation. Um, the other thing I asked the minister to consider um, on June 8 is to defer the closure for two years um, to see if it was possible that post-COVID-19, post, post um, the economic um, outfall of the mining sector in 2017 and 2018, um, give us a two-year grace period to see if we can recover um, in, this, in, in the aviation industry in terms of the numbers, or to give us two years for the Government of Canada to review the regulations downloading services onto municipalities that are not capable of providing service, that's a very big concern to me. And it's very concerning that uh, such an option was put to the table. Um, I don't think it's appropriate. I don't think that a region to, uh, should be uh, required to do that, especially the amount of traffic and such that does pass through our region. And now, uh, re as recently I was told uh, that we've had three large jets sitting on our runway at once that's something that hasn't been heard of since the 80s in this region. So, you know, things are changing. Uh, you know, this is very important. And, you know, we uh, our, our airport is a is a, in a very unique location. It services three municipalities, you know, two on this side and one uh, on the French side. But it also services uh, four mines and is also a jump off point for switching planes to another three mines farther north in Shepherdville. So the amount of traffic that does uh, come through this area is very significant. And that's just charter traffic. Uh, you also look at uh, what services it brings in for people flying in uh, on a scheduled aircraft. You know, we have, you know, we have uh, at, in, in normal times, the amount of aircraft that comes from St. John's alone, followed by what comes from Montreal through Satil is, it is very significant.